So before I start, uh, can I ask you what is your approach to SNT? Did you look at the syllabus until now? You are aware of what all topics come under it? Right, because SNT is one area which people usually neglect. It is always like uh, let us qualify for prelims and we will see the SNT. Okay, that is the reason why uh, SNT always has a problem. Second thing, it is the most dynamic uh, topic because SNT exclusively comes from current affairs zone. Okay, and that too in current affairs specifically there is a region called as emerging technologies. So emerging technologies, you will always find a question in SNT. Okay, anyway, we will discuss about that in a minute. Right. So one big issue with comes with SNT is references. Where do you start looking and all of that? Okay. So can I ask where are you searching? As of now, newspapers, okay, like how everyday articles or anything specific, okay, you will get one specific edition in Hindu, apart from that everyday whatever comes in the news, then see always go to standard sources, do not try to depend on uh, any other uh, resources because you see any website whatever they take. Ultimately, it will be from a standard source only. Okay, so it should either be a newspaper or it should be a government website, or you have one called as PAB, Press Information Bureau. Okay, so again, it's not that you don't know all of this. I'm just trying to uh, shorten your uh, references. Okay, so let's begin. Right. Uh, I know you know the syllabus. I'll just try to tell you where to concentrate. Okay. When it comes to prelims and mains, the approach is different because this is mains and not going to prelims. Okay, right. Uh, I have broadly put the categories based upon uh, the questions which come from there. Okay, so regarding space, if you talk into mains perspective, understand mains usually is either analysis or it will be future prospects. This is the broad types on which questions are based in there. Okay, so say for example, uh, let us go for this. Mm. Okay, you know what is this GPS? What is the purpose of GPS? And find the location of any object, any system, it can be a vehicle, it can be a person, whatever it is. Okay. And GPS is from which country? US. US. Where all it is used? Defense. Why do you need uh, GPS in defense? Enemy position. Okay. You are not concerned about your position? Okay, fine. Let us go. Enemy position. What if enemy is not using GPS? Understand that. So, why do we need GPS? This is what you should start thinking. You know, GPS is used in defense, but how? We do not usually care in that part because we consider we know it. But when someone is asking you and you are supposed to write it down, it is not that easy. Okay. So, uh, this is a system that is actually dependent upon what we broadly say as navigation system. Okay. As of now, we are using two of them. One is GPS, the other one is called as GLONASS. GLONASS belongs to Russia. And yes, we are using them in defense also, missiles. Basically, for missile targeting, GPS is one of the options. But the problem is, right now we have good relations with US and Russia, they are letting us use it. What if in the future the relations go bad? Then our entire missile system will be useless without navigation system. That is why what India has done, India has de uh, dedicated its own uh, navigation satellite system. You either call it NAVIC, you call it IRNSS, it is the same thing. So the question will not come, what is all of this? The question will come, why do we need that? That is mains. Prelims, what are satellites we have, what is the altitude of the satellites, how many of them are there, things like that. But mains, it is always usually like this, introspection. Okay, So, from here the question can come in that way, why does India need its own uh, navigation system? 
and right now we have only a global uh, local coverage IRNSS, regional navigation only. So from Indian border, 1500 uh, kilometers uh, radius. What if India can make it broader in the future? The plan is also there. What is regional right now? We want to make it global. So what is the benefit if it becomes global for India? I'm asking you. What is the benefit if that navigation system becomes just like GPS? G stands for global, right? So, what if Indian system is becoming global? Then, will we get any benefit out of it? Okay. If I am asking you how in terms of security, can you define? We are already doing it in regional. We are again doing it in regional. IRNSS, the purpose is still the same. So, what is the difference between regional and global? That's what I am asking. We can provide the service to others like America provides to the rest of the world. And because India does it at a lesser cost, people will definitely depend on us. We are more uh, perceived as friendly rather than US if you compare with other countries. Anything else? We will also be in a better position to keep track of what is happening outside of our border also. Usually our immediate concern is always what Pakistan and China. But these are the not only two countries that are challenging India's uh, domain. Okay, Middle East, you can't touch with this. But if it is a global system, yes, you can look into Middle East also. African countries, they are heavily dependent on foreign countries for this. So they will definitely trust India much more than any other country. It goes like that. Okay. So we will have an economical point of view. What we call as sovereign interest, protecting our uh, borders, things like that. Okay. So that you should know. Because see, security purpose is a very simple word. But how in security purpose? That is more complicated. Okay. Right. Then. This will also be one area where you have need to focus. Role of space in development. The development can be in any way. They can ask you in health, they can ask you in education, they can ask you in weather management, they can ask you in disaster management, whatever it is. Okay. So if I am asking you what is the role of space in uh, let us say education, what will be your uh, answer? Are we getting internet from satellites? Future. Are we using it currently? Teleeducation. Did we do that? You are trying to understand what I am saying? Thinking of an idea in general is very easy. But when you try to write about it, it becomes very difficult. Recently, COVID. There were places where uh, people did not have internet. So how did they get uh, access to the telecast? They used satellites, TV. Whatever uh, teaching was going on, they were directly re reflecting it on TVs, televisions. Simple. We have been using this service for a very, very long time. There is a satellite called as EduSat, which is specifically dedicated for education purpose only. So these are the things you should know about. These are the things you should talk about. Okay. Right. I will give you one last year question. I will ask you how you will write. So that you will understand uh, what is the place you are in. Okay. Hmm. Then uh, space race, this is one more thing. What do you mean by soft power? Some terms, especially if they are used by some minister or if they are used by a secretary, if they are used by the prime minister, they will automatically become important. Because sometimes questions came directly whatever sentence they have used. Okay, so by default, if at all there is a meeting of two countries, any head of the country is coming to our country or we are going to their country, any agreements they sign regarding SNT, it will automatically become important. Because after every meeting, there will be a joint statement, which is always very important. Joint statement usually covers all the areas. Okay. Right. So, what do you mean by soft power? 
or what do you mean by hard power because this is supposed to be soft there should be something which is hard hard power is when you show your military strength soft power superiority you're not forcing someone to listen to you but it's just like your dollar dollar is the most accepted currency in the world right now so whether you like it or not you have to use dollar there's no other alternative that is soft power because no one is forcing you to use it but you don't have any alternative also okay now see uh, 40 years before if india was talking about space would anyone listen to us now they listen why because we have achieved a lot in space which other countries could not so now they'll take india to be a serious space power that is nothing but soft power now whatever india says regarding space others will sit down and listen okay you can probably call it as diplomacy also right okay so how is isro acting there you need to understand those things what is the role of isro are we is isro soft power right now because we are discussing why can you give me some examples okay anything more recent anything more significant we are trying to do okay hmm right then okay uh if i'm supposed to ask you what do you think is the most important mission of isro right now chandrayaan 3 and after that gaganyaan because it will be the first time when we are sending people to space from our own country not depending on any other country so what happens if we do that okay we are sending indians into space they'll be there for 6 or 7 days they'll come back so what that will actually act as uh, a future perspective which means what whenever other countries want to send anyone astronauts into space they'll come to us as of now what are the options either you'll go for uh, us or you'll go for russia or some other countries which have the capability india will be i think uh, the fourth country in the world that will have the capability fifth after uh, france and uh, china that is what we want here so that also will be dictated to be soft power only because we'll be in a league of a country that can do that okay so those kind of examples which are currently happening you need to concentrate on them okay if at all we are launching a satellite nasa i mean upsc will never ask you what is a satellite what is the purpose etc things like that even if they ask you they'll not ask you that simple there's one question that will give you a better idea but they may ask you regarding the context of it altogether right like the technical side of that particular uh, satellite do we really need it right now why are we doing it whenever is always putting a, mis- a launch it's not simple it's not without a reason there will always be a reason okay right so space from mains point of view this will be important plus here are we trying to put any new things there during launch vehicles are we getting anything new here rlv we are trying to already research is going on in that we have already tested it sometimes then any other new launch vehicles we have come up with there is one called as sslv small satellite launch vehicle that's also very important so the question can come in that manner when you already have uh, two launch vehicles which are already working very good why do you need a smaller satellite launch vehicle or why do you need an rlv okay so that you should know those are the type of uh, questions you should try to focus on okay as much as possible please start asking your own questions don't wait for someone else to ask a question then you should answer it okay right then uh defense from mains point of view it's not always very important defense will be important when something important happens in that area let's put it that way okay for example uh 
you must have heard of this what is it missile is it used to target other uh, missiles or is it is it used to attack someone else okay uh, defense uh, missiles will use broadly be of two categories either they'll be used to attack someone or they'll be used to defend from someone this is what you call as a missile defense system so it's not technically for attacking someone it is for stopping the attack on us okay this defense system was given by russia that you already know this one came in this one came in mains also so why was it so important that it came in mains this was before war it's far before what happened with uh, ukraine currently sanctions turkey also bought the same missiles from uh, russia us put economical sanctions on turkey they asked india you don't buy india said no we already is committed we will buy then they were thinking whether the sanctions will be applicable to india also because it's passed by their parliament they will have to follow it then they bought a exception for india because they need india right now here it is in that context of the economic sanctions the question came in the mains so like i said no one will ask you what is s400 but yes that question was there like that but it was not that simple also they asked one more thing how is this superior to the other defense systems that are available in the world so you should not only know about this one you should also know about the rest of them and you should definitely know about what india already has that is how a question comes in the mains no one will ask you a direct question there even if they ask you direct it will only be a part of the question the main question will be something else okay so always concentrate on current affairs because from mains point of view this will always be very important and only those topics that are significant there are many things happening in the country not every question will come in the mains because see hardly how many questions three or four that is what you get in uh, from snd right so out of those three or four questions you should think only in one thing does this topic have the capability to be given as a mains any topic you read for snd read it from that perspective only then because see automatically if it is important you will get more content it's that simple if the content is not available broadly it means it's not that significant and never go into a topic that talk goes on assumptions something which is not proven upsc will definitely not ask you either like uh, crispr i must have heard of it once a question came in that because the technology became significant to the extent that the person won a nobel prize for that so those type top topics will be coming in then recently one other person won nobel prize for uh, led inventing leds so there also the question was blue led so why did they give that specific sentence why blue led what is so special about it why not white led why not green led why not yellow led why blue led hmm this is blue or white okay so from blue are we getting white or we or are we creating white directly blue led is a base for most of the color combinations that come out there so for that again you should know about frequencies you should know about wavelengths you should know about the color patterns and all of that that is the reason why in the sentence they gave very specifically blue led otherwise they did not give it it was not necessary but the reason they gave it is because you should understand the importance of that one otherwise they would have very well said led light no need of mentioning blue led there so whatever sentence you get in mains please think it is not given simply there will always be a reason behind it okay anyway uh, we we'll look into that don't worry about it then nuclear uh, when it comes to nuclear two things are important the first one india's three stage power program for nuclear technology i think it is safe to say this is the most important topic okay then after this one nuclear power policy 
there is one more which is called as nuclear doctrine of india that's also very important okay then institutions yeah sometimes they may directly ask you regarding an institution or sometimes a question can come what is the importance of the role of these institutions name two or three they can ask you like that so from the time we started until now what role did the institutions play in the development of that sector in india and why is nuclear sector so important for india okay i'll modify the question is nuclear renewable or non renewable renewable yeah natural resource but is it renewable or is it non renewable see this question will be for prelims here you are nicely relaxed sitting you will be fine but in the exam you will get confused is it renewable non renewable it's actually non renewable because it's a mineral which forms after millions of years but nuclear is sustainable that is more important because once you start a nuclear reactor for the next 2 3 years you don't have to worry about the power there but the problem is the fuel inside the material which i use normally uranium plutonium the two most used uh, fuels for that india does not have a very good resource of either of them so what do we do we are supposed to depend on other countries but 1974 we went for a nuclear explosion atomic bomb test after that international sanctions came on india they lasted for almost 3 uh, 4 decades so whatever nuclear based technology we have it's purely coming from us initial contribution canada <coughs> okay so there what they'll ask you is that one because this program has been uh, designed in 1960s it's not a new one and why was it designed because india has a big reserve of thorium thorium directly cannot be used i'll have to modify it into something else but there is no nuclear reactor in the world currently that can directly use thorium as a fuel so test research so that is one area where they may ask a question or else whatever nuclear reactors we are using in the world right now are they based upon fission or fusion fission so which is better fission or fusion why okay okay so is the main reason that because it only gives more amount of energy yeah that is that the only reason why you are preferring fusion cost effective okay cost effective only when more people start using it latest technologies are always costly in the beginning hmm so india has hydrogen in uh, long bigger terms where do we get hydrogen from water that is what makes hydrogen more viable and the most important thing is the by product for uh, fission reactions the by product are radioactive they are very very harmful so even after you use them multiple times still the radiation will go on and for uranium it can go on for uh, millions of years usually what we call as a half life period but hydrogen the by product will maximum be water or it will maximum be oxygen or some other forms which are completely harmless that is what makes fusion much more feasible and yes what you said because it uh, produces a tremendous amount of energy that is the reason why the entire world is trying to do that there is an international project iter whenever you hear the word thermonuclear understand it is fusion either thermonuclear bomb or thermonuclear reactor it's still the same thing that is why uh, seven to eight countries in the world they are trying to build a reactor which will sustain on fusion reaction india is part of the project so in this context they may ask you about iter they will not ask you what is fusion which is better even if they ask one small part of the question the main part will be something else okay so please understand that part you should always try to understand from which point of view the questioner the examiner will ask the question 
try to understand his viewpoint not our viewpoint okay right so from nuclear this is one area this one institutions like i said uh, they may ask you directly for 5 or 10 marks or they may go for other pattern also okay contributions something on those lines the contributions of indian institutions have been tremendous for the growth of nuclear technology in india uh discuss or uh, let's say analyze if they say that then second question name some of the institutions that have been uh, doing this work you'll have two parts okay right uh am i going fast okay then this one by far is uh, one of the most important areas because again this is happening a lot in india okay so can you tell me why is this important what do you mean by renewable what is non renewable non exhausting okay so when we use them again are they just as effective or will their efficiency decrease without any decrease in efficiency that is important because see there are materials which can be recycled also but recycled materials do they have the same strength as the ones that were made in the beginning their strength will drop so renewable energies which you can use again and again with sustainability in mind that is very important every other resource when you try to exploit it you are not saving it for the future generations but renewable by definition it can be passed on to the future generations also because there is always going to be water in the oceans there is always going to be wind there is always going to be sun at least for the next billion years okay but petroleum and all of them no guarantee so for renewable the most important thing will be sustainability okay so india is betting a lot of uh, money on this one right now in fact we are among the top 5 countries in the world that are investing a huge amount of money on renewable uh, technologies within renewable technologies india has two favorites one is solar second not just india throughout the world that is becoming more and more favorite for everyone okay so within this one solar energy and that one these two are very very important apart from this one uh, there is one more concept ess energy storage systems you are producing a lot of energy very good but if you are not storing it efficiently it's useless so that technology is also catching up uh, frequently the reason why that is important is uh, recently in delhi they installed a ess which will produce or which will supply power when the power demand is very high see ideally what happens in cities if at all uh, when is the power demand very high in a day timings timings 9 to Nine o'clock. Everyone ju will just start coming. They'll take one hour to adjust, etc., etc. Twelve to three. Okay. I'll put it more broadly. Let's say nine to six. That time frame will always be important. What about the night? Comparatively, but yes, night is very important because TV serials, movies. No one will want to miss that. I'm not joking. It may look very silly, but. one day or two days or for one week you cut off time during that time period you'll see how india will react okay so uh, what they did because the peak hours is during 9 to 6 in delhi normally what they'll do to give supply to let's say industries they'll cut off domestic supply somewhere one hour two hours three hours whatever it is but what if you have an energy storage system which is a battery basically whatever extra energy is required you'll provide it from the battery without having to cut power to anyone long term for political parties that's a very important outcome 
for us it may look silly but for them it is very very important so the first system was recently uh, put in delhi in place that is what makes this one again important okay right then uh, there is one more form of energy normally we call it as wind wind energy as of now what a project we have is it on the land or is it in the water any windmills you have seen is it on the land or water land it's usually called as onshore but now the focus has shifted to offshore so why okay fine the breeze comes usually from oceans so there it should be stronger agreed then or let me modify the question if at all i am supposed to put up a windmill what will be my options what is the most important criteria there i need a constant speed of wind which is usually available where either you'll look for a mountain or you'll look for ocean two places how many such places are there in india as of now one thing second they are all onshore so land requirement india already has a problem with the land availability that land is supposed to be used for everything on the top of that you are using it for even this one also and wind farms they don't take uh, this much piece of land they take uh, extensive piece of land so when you know that the same potential is present in water also why not use it and in water where will you go continental shelf continental slope shelf because slope gets deeper and deeper we may not have the technology for that simple it's always based on uh, what we have okay so offshore wind projects also india is investing a decent amount currently two projects have been approved in two states also gujarat and tamil nadu okay so recently whatever we are trying to do one more area is uh, biomass there also india is betting a huge amount of money right now okay that is what makes renewable energies a favorite topic these days last year question also came i'll discuss that later on okay so always focus on what is currently happening and this is one of the most important areas renewable energies okay in that like i said solar hydrogen ess and offshore projects okay right uh this one is the most uh, broad uh, subject because it covers a huge range of uh, spectrum and in this one like i said oh sorry that's the most important thing emerging technology is a very common name given under that you have maybe at least 70 or 80 topics currently going on and that is not an exhaustive list please keep it in mind they'll keep on adding they may be keep on deleting also it can go both ways okay this cyber security is also part of emerging technologies only but because the field is important i mention it separately again last year one question came on cyber security directly in the current context cyber security is a very very important area okay so what else can you talk about in latest technologies emerging 5g okay then ai robotics nanotechnology biotechnology then 3d quantum computing cloud computing like i said the list goes on so understand all of these technologies are just been given one simple term latest emerging technologies okay when we read it we'll be very happy okay only one topic but when we start going into the topics then we'll know what is the pain of that topic okay but like i said because it is emerging it will be of interest automatically but always keep in mind there are two things to consider first and foremost should always think from india's point of view because this is the exam you're writing for indian government first and foremost our point of view then compare it with other countries what can we learn from them where are our mistakes how can we rectify that these two are usually important any emerging technology then after that what is the government trying to do to rectify that 
what can also be called as government initiatives both ways it goes like that any emerging technologies those three areas compulsorily you need to focus okay right uh, apart from this telecommunication yeah like you said 5g that's basically the topic there recently there was an auction spectrum so questions can come regarding that spectrum auction the importance etc no one will ask you the procedure but they may ask you whatever is happening regarding auctions is that the right way or not but for you to understand all of that you should first understand what is an auction so what is an auction the highest bidder highest bidder okay and why are they going auction for the spectrum what are the things the government will normally auction or let me modify the question for the government to auction something what is the first and the most important criteria which will make a lot of common sense also common sense think at the very basic part okay but why is the government doing it benefit of all is secondary but how what authority does the government have to do it i think this is a better question by what authority is a government actually auctioning something can you auction something no you can say for example if dhoni wants to auction his mobile phone do you think no one will buy it so why is dhoni having the right to auction his phone he wants it simple like i said the first part unless you own it you can't sell it or you can't put it so does the government own the spectrum this is where the question comes so you are understanding should start from here what right does the government have to auction something minerals the government auctions so why does the government have the right to auction minerals and why does the government own the minerals okay or let me ask a more simple question whenever you are buying a piece of land why are you paying tax to the government you buy a new home you buy a new piece of land you pay tax to the government why what services they provided providing service is different but that is for registration that is the name they use so why do you have to register a property with the government my simple question is the government going to stay in the building is the government going to give the rent you are doing it with your own money then why are you paying money to the government why do you need to get registered if it is a sovereign asset of the government then why are you buying it so can the government take it back again if they want without a doubt which means that basically the land is belonging to the government we are only taking it on please may not be the right word but we are taking it under some conditions that's it as simple as that and because minerals are found in the land automatically natural resources by default all the natural resources belong to the government it's that simple and spectrum is also considered to be a natural resource that is the reason why the government has the right to auction it if you understand this part what follows will become easier okay i'm not telling you important topics i'm telling you how to approach a topic that is more important okay right like i said government initiatives in all of these areas are very very important there is no denying the fact there three things whatever i said okay then do this is part of your uh, emerging technologies but because they both are very important i decided to mention them separately okay so robotics and nanotechnology again these are technologies that are emerging but we don't still know what will happen with them that is why for these topics there is one thing which is very very common ethical i'm more concerned about that one okay so why am i so worried about ethics here basically what is robotics i'm sure you know can you tell me what is robotics
see you know it but when i'm asking you to explain okay so computer can i call computer a robot no doubt okay calculator is it a robot are you sure am i using any ai in calculator so if something does that it can i call it a robot atm is it a robot there should be a difference between a machine and a robot calculator i can call it a machine i cannot call it a robot because somewhere down the lane the most important thing that should match is ai there should be ai somewhere used in there otherwise it's not a robot simple artificial intelligence why am i calling it intelligence what is intelligence i am putting it artificially why how do we learn something humans what are the ways through which we learn observe then listen experimentation then imitating others and by our own experience either way similarly you are giving some options to the machine to learn that's why you are calling it machine learning also it's a branch of ai okay so there you are actually telling a machine how to do and what to do but are you sure that the machine will always take the right decision chat gpt in the beginning it became very very popular but down the line people started looking at the problems that are possible when people started using it no one knew that the problem can come because it's a machine you don't know how it is starting to learn you don't know the patterns it learns okay so you are creating something ultimately which you don't completely control so in the future who is to decide what will happen you are driving a car suddenly someone is coming in between you will hit a brake immediately it will hardly take you milliseconds to do that but for the machine for the same thing it needs to run millions of calculations before it hits the brake and what will happen it will only learn when it did a mistake which means what it is already killed one person then for the second time it will learn okay it's not kill a person the person is already dead will that mistake happen with humans that is why i'm talking about ethical issues because when you are giving that power for someone else you can decide what will be the output similarly nanotechnology also you are trying to interfere at the micro level which you don't even completely understand right now so whatever may be a very good option now may not be as good in the future so again the same thing that is why these things will have ethical concerns biotechnology again one more area where there will be an ethical concern so for questions like this and from mains point of view ethical concerns will play a very important role applications will always be there social applications broad category that can be welfare that can be health that can be education whatever it is but apart from that the place where you are supposed to analyze more that will be in the ethical part only okay right then technical terms some of the latest technologies that are happening in this sometimes i may ask you about graphene graphene there is a lot of research going on people have found it has a lot of benefits also but understand upsc has only asked a question regarding graphene in the prelims until now it has never touched the topic in the mains because it is still in research mode please understand that very clearly the maximum they may ask you applications of graphene which is presently known which will be a very simple question which i don't think upsc will be asking anyway in mains okay right so any topic you touch please think only one thing does this topic have the potential to be asked in mains that one question should give you the answer okay right these are again in general out of uh, what we have already discussed okay now we'll take one question this is the question that came last year in mains so uh, i'll give you two minutes you read the question you tell me what you'll answer 
or leave the answer part you tell me first how you'll approach it Please don't worry if you are telling the right or wrong thing. Doing a mistake here is far better than doing it in the actual exam. Okay? Just a broad line. Approach. I am not talking about what points you will write and all of that. Hmm. Anyone wants to try? Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, if I may ask you, on what basis did you decide what to write? Like, what was your idea? Because it is a future perspective for you. Okay. And so, usually, all these things, even the vision 2047, the future perspective, the goals, 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 and to achieve that one, we are supposed to provide some insights to such a budget allocation and what, how well we are uh, sustainably using the resources currently. Okay, and uh, why did you decide to go towards budget? Because everything is the basic criteria is what we have our own resources and uh, recently we have been uh, doing such an Okay, so it was nothing based upon the question then. Okay, hmm. anyone else? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. See, understand the first thing. Should always concentrate there. What is the word limit? Yeah. Right. Right. So, 
you are given only 250 words whenever you read a mains question the first thing you are supposed to look at is that one because that will decide the entire answer second there are what you call as keywords in the question which you should focus on i will probably divide into primary and secondary categories okay primary keyword is which will give you the direction of the answer itself and secondary keyword will help in the content it goes like that so in this question ideally do you think or how these are supposed to be important but they have given words which are more important than that this is not the end of the question the end of the question is here so in english what do you mean by justify evidence which means you are supposed to give examples okay then here the second part of the question that is not the end of the question this is what do you mean by explain in english simply if i am asking you explain what do you do you will try to talk about what you know regarding the topic positives negatives etc things like that so does that mean for this two parts of the question you will answer in the same manner are you getting the point then there are two parts so for which part how many marks you will give for which part how much of time you will allocate for which part will you give more importance will it be 50 50 will it be 40 60 will it be 70 30 what 50 50 okay why but the first one is saying justify the second one says explain and where will you get more content will it be the first one or will it be the second one you'll get more content here not here i always told you please think from the examiner point of view according to him what is important the first part or the second part i will go to the first part because it's using the word justify and i'll get more content to write here because the government's commitment how close it to reality that is basically what is asking you there means always take your time to understand the question correctly if you don't do that whatever rate after that will be useless okay and be very specific all of this is regarding indian context no one is asking you any international scenarios here if india is involved in any international scenario which can be useful here yes you can mention that okay so for this one because he is asking do you think so this is your opinion you should write what you feel you should write what you believe and whatever you are writing you should always give an example to sustain that if you say yes we can achieve give statistics presently what is the scenario how close are we how far are we things like that okay once you understand this question correctly writing the answer is far more easier content you will anyway have it you should have it actually by the time you write exam but understanding what is asking and then presenting the content is more important so if you don't understand the question correctly or if you are in a hurry to understand or right answer it will definitely turn out to be a disaster only so always pay attention to this this is my preliminary keywords then secondary keywords as i said before okay uh, i am concerned about this one energy needs energy need is a very broad term what do you mean by energy need simple english what do you understand by energy need what are energy we need and when we say we we are talking about the entire country it will include all the sectors of economy it will include public it will include private everything including farming etc all of that so is india a energy surplus country or energy deficient country where are we deficient which sector are we deficient i'm telling you how to write it is indian government able to provide power to all of them equally and out of the total power we produce which source is providing the maximum percentage is producing the maximum percentage i'm talking about the fuel which fuel are we using for maximum power production fossil fuels more specifically coal which is not a renewable uh, energy it's a non renewable energy so from that one 50% of the energy requirement is supposed to be coming from renewable for that one you should know presently how much of energy energy goal is being supplied by renewables 
and can you really come 50 means not only improving your energy from renewable you should also decrease energy consumption from non renewable which means dependence on coal should reduce should understand about that also please keep it in mind no country in the world no matter how advanced it is even including us they have still not completely done with coal countries are still dependent on thermal energy for that that is what i am trying to say here so that question you should start thinking from multiple angles that is what makes the first part very important because you have a lot to write there but you can't write a lot also because this is there so whatever point you select has to be specific exact okay one question is taking this much time to analyze please keep it up then here this is if you know about subsidies what is the subsidies being given by the government why does the government need to give subsidies first of all in the first place you will get your answer right okay is it correct to shift the entire subsidies to renewable definitely not everything has to happen in stages so what should be the plan for it what should be the path for it is the government doing that does the government have any plan that is what you should mention here okay always try to take as much time as possible to understand the question correctly okay right just one more question then we'll stop Hmm. Again, last year's question only. I told you, cyber security is one of their favorite areas. Anyway, I'll keep with this. Okay. See, the reason why this question was asked is because of this national cyber security strategy that was recently introduced by the government of India. the question is not asking you what is national cyber security strategy what is the question asking you examine look at the word again the extent to which india has successfully developed a comprehensive plan not a plan a comprehensive plan okay so here my secondary keywords are all of this different elements of cyber security you'll be able to invite tell that that is direct straight forward question not a problem there but the second part is what is more important and how are you supposed to think about the second part again read the first line he is not asking you to talk in general he is asking you to talk regarding the challenges that are already there so you should know what the challenge is you should know how to address it and how to address it through this one again is that strategy addressing the challenges which we already have in cyber security like say for example we have a deficiency of people specialists so is the policy trying to do something to rectify that are you trying to recruit more people is there a plan for you things like that whatever challenges india has is that strategy comprehensively trying to deal with it not a patchwork so this question will require a lot of analysis so if you ask me i'll probably go for uh, 25 75 75% of my answer will be in the second part only only 25% will be in the first part because that is straight forward elements of cyber security okay so please take your time understand the keywords understand the secondary keywords see what exactly the question is trying to tell you then you decide what to write that will make much more sense okay right uh, just for your reference lastly i have added some uh, references this is usually what i follow apart from some other magazines which you don't need at this stage okay anyway it will be shared with you don't worry about it right but always keep your references to standard points don't try to take it uh, and definitely please don't go to wikipedia okay right uh this specifically india science.in that is a website directly managed by the department of science and technology only so whatever you find there will be 100% authentic it will also tell you the focus of uh, indian government right now and within this website you'll have this one science monitor it's a half an hour uh, video that entire week what is the most important current affairs in snt this entire website is dedicated only for snt please keep it in mind 
and within that every uh, you'll there'll be videos for every one week one week current affairs of snt in that part current affairs which the government is interested in please keep that one in mind not for your exam point of view okay then apart from that like you said yes hindu and all and this magazine down to earth down to earth talks about many topics but sometimes they talk about snt topics also if at all there is anything regarding snt please focus on it they do write very good articles yojana also one edition in a year will definitely be on snt purely talk that edition because experts will write in that uh, article it's not written by you and me okay right so any doubts it's okay your festival is anyway forward not right now i'm sure then you'll start getting doubts okay but please don't neglect snt it's a very important topic four questions in mains is not a joke 48 marks minimum okay i'm sure you know the importance of one mark also in mains right hmm. hello then i'll stop here